Uh, how did I manage to get this in Spanish? Who cares? So you're looking for brand new cards like the GTX 1080 Ti or the AMD Vega series cards to do your mining. But in this video, I'm gonna show you five cards that you can buy today that'll help you ROI even faster. Welcome back, my name is Seth Estrada, and if you're watching this, you're probably on my YouTube channel, Seth Estrada. Today, I wanna to talk to you about cards that have been overlooked for some time, and that if you're mining cryptocurrency, you need to consider today. First off, today I don't have any good news for NVIDIA, other than to say the 2000 series NVIDIA cards are coming sooner than later, so definitely watch out for an announcement on those from NVIDIA. But I've got some secret cards that aren't being mined on, First on the list is the R9 290. Now, why aren't people mining on the R9 290? Well, frankly, mostly because they just don't know that they can. The hash rate is really good, and the price is really, really good. Um, at $300 and an ETH hash rate of 30 mega hashes per second, it presents a tremendous value. So if you're not looking at this card, I highly recommend that you do. Now, what you're looking at here is my community spreadsheet for GPU mining efficiency. This is just the data tab right here. And I'm gonna ask you at the end of this video, here's a spoiler alert. <laughs> if you have better numbers than I have here, please contribute. Sharing is caring and you help the entire community to do better by giving them a sense for what's possible. And uh, this side of the spreadsheet is totally openly editable. Over here on dollars per hash, this is going to give you a quick breakdown of which cards perform at which price per hash. Now, what I mean is when you sort a given column, we'll say Equihash, for example, maybe you've been mining Z Classic or you're still mining Bitcoin Gold, something that uses the Equihash algorithm. I'm gonna sort A to Z. And what it's gonna show me is that per hash, this is the cheapest way to get started mining today. And there it is, as mentioned before, the R9 290 is actually the least expensive way to get serious hashing power today. So it's top of the list for this video, the R9 290 overlooked by many, many people out there. All I can say is I feel for you. I'm sorry if you haven't considered using the R9 290 because the price is still very reasonable and it'll get you hashing at really high rates today, at least on Equihash. Over with ETHash, the story is pretty much the same. Very, very similar. The R9 290 is still the cheapest way to get a single mega hash of ETHash. So if you're mining Ethereum or dual mining Ethereum and Decred, then the R9 290 will get you hashing faster than anything else. Let's go over here to Blake 14R mining Decred. And right here again, the 280X and the 290, they're right there, top of the list. Cheapest way to get started in dual mining today. And the R9 290 is at the very top of that secret mystery card list. Of course, when we go over to Crypto Night, the story changes a little bit. Wait a second. No, it doesn't. Because in terms of hash per dollar or dollar per hash, the R9 290 is such an incredible value that it'll get you mining crypto notes like Monero, like Electronium, Bytecoin, if you're into Bytecoin, Intensecoin, what have you. They can be mined with the R9 290 at a really inexpensive starting cost. So without worrying about the cost of electricity, all we're looking at here is the total cost of the card versus how well it performs for that algorithm. And it looks like the R9 290 is our new champion in so many categories, in part because you'll find it used for about this price or less. But if you look carefully, you may even be able to find it new in box. Follow this link to see the spreadsheet live and to be able to look at these numbers live. Looking over here at the efficiency per watt tab, I've got a similar lineup where all of the algorithms are represented up on top and I can sort to see which GPUs are most efficient. So what I mean now is, if I sort for the same algorithm, ETHash, we'll see at the very top of the list, a different card appears, but that's just because this particular card gets the most hashes per watt, if that makes sense. So for long-term efficiency, if you're running this rig for six months, 12 months, two years, however long you want to keep mining, then the efficiency will stay really, really high. Even after you've broken even on the investment that you made in this card, this will be more profitable after that point. Again, guys, I'll put out the standard disclaimer. 
What I do for a living is actually business consulting and technical consulting. I consult companies on integrating emerging technologies, things like blockchain payment for e-commerce or advanced marketing techniques using digital marketing tools, video production using multi-camera, virtual reality, stereoscopic 3D, and other highly technical pursuits that businesses need. What I don't do full time is I do not mine full time. So that disclaimer is out of the way. And I'm gonna sort for Equihash now. Again, totally different card. These prices right next to the names of the cards, this is pretty much the price that you're gonna pay for these cards today to get them shipped to you today. You've already heard me say this in other videos, but you get it. This is not what these, these cards debuted at with their MSRP, no, no. This has happened since the bull run of Bitcoin in the end of 2017, and now the subsequent mining rush. Everybody wants to mine, so the price of cards has gone up significantly. This is what you can expect to pay today, paying average prices, and getting something actually in stock and shipped to you today. There are many companies that are having to wait, uh, even system builders that are having to wait three to four months to get these cards delivered at lower rates than this. If you want it delivered today, you're going to pay a premium, and that is just the reality of the market. I didn't make up the rules, that's just what they are today. So we go to the Kryptonite algorithm on efficiency per watt, and let's sort the sheet A to Z here. You've already seen this in other videos, the Vega 56 is absolutely the Kryptonite hashing king in terms of efficiency. It is the most efficient card at hashing Kryptonite on the market today. In the top five though, we've got the other Vega 64, we've got the Vega Frontier Edition. There we go, no air horn necessary. Applause! So, guys, the Vega Frontier Edition is also a hashing king when it comes to Kryptonite. We see that for many of the algorithms, the 290 is a real contender. But what you don't know, what you don't know on the dollar per hash is that there are a couple other cards that are extremely valuable cards by way of hashing. Rounding off the list for the five mystery cards, I've got R9390, the RX 550, the RX 560, which is still on the top half of cards in terms of bang for the buck, and then second on the list, which is extremely valuable, the R9 295X2. Guys, this is, this is the mystery card. This is the secret sauce. I really want to talk about this card because it is the secret weapon. What do I mean by the secret weapon? Jumping over to this tab, let's see what Bitsby Trippin has to say about this card in particular. This happened not 10 months ago. No, still call your, what they had to do with them, but, um, I want AD to build this east. I want 33.6. 33.6. 33.6. Per GPU. This is four, four generation, three generations old. Rocking 33.6. Guys, just a reminder, there are two GPUs inside of this card. That's what the 295X2 stands for. There's a GPU here and a GPU here. So that is 33.6 mega hashes per second times two in one card. Over here, I've got XFX's website. One of the reasons that this particular card does so well is because of, well, the specs you see ahead. The core clock, fairly high. Number of stream processors. Stream processors. Really high. Best in class, because there are two GPUs on the same card. Now, without going too much into the other specs, it's two AMD Radeon R9 series GPUs. It's, it's essentially two 290s on the same card or 290Xs on the same card. And then it's got its own hybrid cooling solution. But this fan right here is not for the GPUs. It's for the VRM. So it's a separate chipset that does your controlling on card. Right here, the factory fitted water pump and radiator get the perfect blend of cooling for both the card chipset and then the GPUs themselves. Generally speaking, people who mine with this card or who, or who have ever mined with this card don't have problems with temperatures getting out of control and they don't have problems with massive sound because they're using a liquid cooling system. Jumping over here, here's Sapphire's website, see what they had to say about it. Essentially, nothing but good things. Uh, how did I manage to get this in Spanish? Who cares? Right here, Graphics Core Next, 28 nanometer process, so it's not as small a manufacturing process as current generation cards, but the proof is in the pudding. Who cares what the manufacturing size is if it's hashing at a higher rate? Right here, here's the bad news. Where you can find it is eBay. Oh. It's listed in mint condition right here for 750. That would be what you pay if essentially brand new, used and available you're looking at uh, somewhere more along the lines of 550 to 650 for that card. Working condition, but not new. 
And sadly, eBay is the only way you're going to find this. So when I call it a mystery card, what I mean is you just can't find it anywhere because people who know are mining the snot out of it. Now, if you haven't already checked out the actual site, it's right here at bit.ly slash GPU charts. As you can see right here on the data tab, I've added all these brand new cards and I'm really excited about these older generation cards. Why? Because you can get your hands on them today for half the cost of a brand new 480 even, or a brand new 580. In some cases, we're seeing the 580 go for more than $600. Guys, this is getting out of hand. Gamers want their cards. Miners need more hash power. We kind of all need to agree that hardware like this still deserves another chance at life. And the only way to do it is to find them used or to find wherever you can get these brand new. So without looking at older generation cards, we've got the R9 series of the 290, 390, and the 295 X2. But what about the RX 550 and the RX 560? Why did they make it on the list? Well, let's look at the rankings over here on dollars per hash to answer that question. Right here, when I sort from highest to lowest on ETH hash, you'll notice that those particular cards, they're not super high on the list, but they are in the top half. The 550 is right here in the top five, in fact. And the 560, again, it's in the top half of the stacked ranking. They're very efficient cards, and they're really inexpensive. And the 560 can be had for 250, and the 550 can be had for 180 if you're looking very carefully. So in terms of bang for buck, they're going to give you hashing power now at a cheaper rate than any of the NVIDIA cards are. You're going to get a much better value by starting to hash today on an RX 550 or an RX 560. If you want to get a card that's brand new in box, you don't want to deal with something that's used. You don't want to worry about somebody already having mind on a beast like the R9 295X2. You can get started with the RX 550 or 560 and just know that you made a really good purchase. But the 550 in particular is a really great value. Why is that? Let's look at the data tab right here and the performance numbers right here. The performance difference between the 550 and the 560 is not super great. It's not super high. There's again, only a, a very small difference between these two cards in terms of their hash ability. Now, some of these I don't have numbers for and so I've filled in with zeros for now. If you have numbers, do us a solid and fill in those numbers on the data tab. But if you don't, well, obviously, don't touch it. We want consistent hash rates only. But the 550 and 560, they're brand new cards. You can find them today. In fact, in some cases, you can walk into a computer store and find them on the shelf today. You don't even have to order them online. The other reason that you would want to look at these, outside of the performance characteristics of hash rate, right here, they sip power. These are low power cards. You're not going to have to run a massive power supply to get these hashing on your system. So dollar per hash, yeah, they're they're right there in the top half. Now efficiency per watt, the RX 550 and the RX 560, let me start with mining Ethereum so we can just take a look, see how they hold up here. It tells a similar story. Guys and gals, right here, the RX 550 is right at the midway point. You see, it's not in the lower half just yet, but it's not really in the upper half either. The RX 560, because it gets that slightly higher hash rate, at the same power consumption is going to do better. Six months from now, eight months from now, when you've been able to break even on the purchase of this card, this 560 is going to be more profitable for you in the long haul than the 550 is. So there's the bad news. Oh. Starting to hash today on either the RX 550 or the RX 560 is gonna be a really great way to get started today in mining. But hey, since we're talking about low cost rock stars, check it out. The RX 560 and the RX 1050 Ti, right next to each other, neck and neck, have similar performance characteristics, similar efficiency, and even a similar price. So if you're more into the NVIDIA side of mining, then you really should be considering the 1050 Ti. Guys, these are my top five right here. I needed to bring these to your attention because people just aren't paying attention to the RX 550, the R9 290, the R9 390, and the R9 295X2. Some of them are hard to find. Some of them are really high cost when you do find them, but others, you know what? They're very affordable for miners to get started today. You don't have to have a multi-thousand dollar budget to get four or five of these into your mining rig, or for that matter, to put them into your gaming rig. If you're looking for GPUs that can be run in crossfire mode, if you're looking at a GPU for a gaming system on AMD, 
you're actually going to get better performance from the R9 295 X2 than you will even from your RX 580. Guys, at a similar price, it's just worth it. We're taking a look at to see what you can do to get your goals met today. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting the bell down below. Thank you for watching and sharing this video. Your viewership means the world to me. I make these videos for you. All right. Love your face. See you in the next one.